first things first it's 96 degrees today i'm gonna be a sweaty hot mess in this video just bear with me the only thing that is messier and nastier than me right now is my boat i've been fishing in it probably 10 out of the last 14 days straight nothing is organized and it is nappy so what a perfect day to do a little boat walkthrough for the first time in the three years that i have owned this 2025 impact xs where to start all right first things first i chose the lund 2025 impact xs because it is a super versatile boat where i live in minnesota there's not a lot of people who only fish walleyes or only fish bass. A lot of us do everything, and I'm one of those. I don't care what it is, if it fights hard or it's the best bite of the season for that weak window, I wanna fish it. Super versatile boat. Two, I have a four-year-old daughter. She'll turn five in August, and I needed a family-friendly boat. I used to have a bass boat. I almost fell out of that thing a bunch of times, so you can't have someone who's 36 inches tall running around with this much of a lip on the edge so i needed a boat that was family friendly but super fishy that was my number one priority sorry Maisie, it had to be fishy first but also a good family boat and the impact nails it i fished in dozens and dozens of different models of boats and i fell in love with this one when i spent some time with brad hawthorne on lake of the woods chasing walleyes and also on Leech Lake for a Lund photo shoot deal where I got to fish in every single model boat. I hopped in an impact and I'm like, this is the one. A couple of reasons why. Big open layout for a windshield boat. I used to have a tiller, so I'm not used to having things in my way. I'm used to having things where I need them within an arm's reach and just an open layout. I love the narrow gunnels on this boat having this little sidestep. There's nothing against Pro V's. If you're a Pro V guy, it's one of the best boats in the world, right? But this boat fits my style. I like having this edge. I don't like having the lip come into here because I feel like claustrophobic. I like having that edge where if I want to land a fish, I can sit on the edge and scoop that fish in the boat. Also, that gives me the bonus rod holders on the sides for two rods where I've just got ones that I know I'm going to use quick, easy access. So they're out, not put away, but you don't notice that they're out. The 2025, you can have a 200 on the back. That's the max capacity. I'll answer this question first because it's the first thing everybody asks if you're selling a boat or whatever. How fast does it go? <laughs> With that max 200, load it down with gear i get anywhere from about 49 to 52. if it's just me a half a tank of gas and all my gear 51 ish if it's today i put 46 gallons of gas in went from completely dry to completely topped off giant fuel tank so it goes a long ways all of our gear we we're going 50.3 across the lake so it goes plenty fast for fun for our local walleye leagues I'm right there with 200 horsepower tillers, 250 deep Vs. We're all going about the low 50s, you know, racing each other. So she's pretty quick. I went with the V8. It's got the Pro XS mean bark. I had to have it. It's pretty fuel efficient for being a big nasty motor and it just looks sexy and runs flawless. I think I've got 260 hours on it so far here in the last couple seasons. Um, and I don't do any trolling with it. So that's just all zip into a spot here and there. So let's kind of just start at the back and work our way up. It's gonna be impossible for me to touch everything, but I'll try to dive in a little bit. I have one talon on the back. In my dream world, I'd have two so that the boat doesn't pivot when you talon down. I have a kid. I want her to like spending time in the boat with me. I needed that ladder in the back. I'll just show you real quick. Big, nice, flat fishing deck in the back. That just flips up, telescoping ladder. Flip it down, it doesn't hit my transducer or anything. My four-year-old can get in and out of the boat when we beach it and swim, taking a break midday from fishing. If I had no kids, there'd be a second talon back there, I promise you. Now, I went with a 10-foot talon, which there's 15s now. Most people, who are die-hard fishing folks are running 15 footers, 12 footers. If you don't know what a talon is, you press a button, a telescoping pole sticks down in the water and it pins you there so you don't ever have to use an anchor. I went with the 10 foot because if you can see, it's the same height or a little lower than my motor. So I never wanted to have to worry about a tilt bracket 
or anything if my motor's gonna not gonna hit my talons not gonna hit and the reason that was so important for me i live in a tiny old home it's got a three stall garage but the garage door is six foot ten and a half inches high at the wood six foot ten inches at the rubber and now if you look online they say impacts are seven feet tall so i waited for a couple years thinking i can't get a windshield boat in this garage i'm gonna stick with my 18 foot pro guide tiller and uh i tried it one day <laughs> and if i take the motor cowling off which is just tap that pop the handle i've done this 10 million times now and tilt my motor all the way down i can sneak this in a garage door that is just over six foot ten inches tall and get it inside which is crazy that's i don't know if it's possible to have a lower garage door than that i think seven foot is pretty standard now and uh maybe even eight foot pop that back on of course i'm not lined up now that i'm trying to do it on video so that's the reason for the short talon keeping it at the back another thing i loved about the impact the jump seats this is what the xs is in impact xs extra seating so i don't have to i have two seats for these pedestals right here i rarely ever use them because with those jump seats you can seat four and then when you get to the spot flip them down you have a casting deck to fish off of and no seats in your way to bump into that was one of my favorite things about this boat big open layout and i can still have four people and it stays fishy so now let's keep going okay i have a bimini top i made fun of bimini tops forever you see it down here this is uh if you're adding it on a boat order this is called the top hider because if you don't have it with you're not going to use it and you're never going to pack it so it just slides underneath there so it's just hidden out of the way and I found if I leave it in here, I don't even realize I have it. And then I actually use it. And I made fun of them, but I have a kid now. If it's 100 degrees out and sunny like today, it gives you two, three extra hours of fishing when you pop that up. Or if you're going up on the rainy river, early spring sturgeon fishing, whatever. I'm not a four year old, but man, did I pop that thing up fast when it was rainy and cloudy and windy and nasty outside about 22 degrees. You throw that thing up and then throw the little deal in the windshield so you're blocked off. Some people even throw a buddy heater in there. So uh, getting that little top hider add-on and leaving it in there, it just pops in here and here, swings up. It takes a minute. It's super slick. I would definitely recommend it. And I'm sorry for making fun of them forever. So, all right, next. Like I said, no, I didn't mention the live well. 26 or 28 gallon live well. It's 30, 38 inches across. Definitely more than big enough for any of the fish that I catch. And it's got that high speed pickup. So, I mean, you can pump water in, but also with that high speed pickup, when you're running across, across the lake, it's force feeding fresh water in there too. I keep call tags in here and normally, my daughter used them last. So she made a jump rope and then it turned into a hula hoop. But normally they're not like this and I hang them like this right on the aerator so that they're all in a row when I need them. Can't have enough little cup holders, two holders. I keep a scissors and a pliers at the back all the time. My net stays on the talon. Even if we're netting a fish, every cast, it goes back on the talon when we're done so you know where it's at. There's never a, oh, where is it? Or there's fishing rods or something laying in it or tangled. It's always ready to just boom, scoop, back on. It's an expensive net holder, but I like it. Um, so if we're gonna keep working from the back up, start down here. This is where I keep all my trolling rods. Let's see if I can pop this open. I have like 10 and a half, 11 foot telescoping trolling rods. I've got four of them in here. Two lead core setups, two bottom bouncer setups. Even got the big giant light for fishing after dark. And I just keep those in there because I never want to troll. But if I have to, and I have to catch fish, have to cover water, they're there and they're ready. Otherwise I would never have them with. So you gotta do that. 
Uh, let's see here. This side, I've got a couple of different spots in this boat where I almost treat them like junk drawers. This particular junk drawer is where I keep all of my uh, like rod holders with the sport track. I've just got Cisco bases with the Canon rod holders. They're like $19 rod holders. And they just pop right in on the guide or the sport track system. So this is where I keep like rod holders, a jump pack to jump start a boat. Um, if you ever needed to, I keep, let's see, you know, like a Claymore light for filming after dark. This is kind of miscellaneous accessories, like my transducer cover for my live scope, rod holders, ram mounts, things like that go down there. Over here up in the council, I run a 12 inch Humminbird Helix on mine. It's about, on this year, this is a 2020 impact. That's about the biggest you can get in there. Although I have seen people sneak 15s in now. And, uh, oh, I thought that was on. I've seen people sneak 15 inch graphs in there now. I have a four inch stable um, mount. And I like those just because you bolt them down and they never move. Like I have no reason to adjust this and it is not moving at all. One thing that I do is I always throw one talon remote right here. They come with two remotes. I put one talon remote up front, one talon remote in the back. So here if I'm driving and it's shallower than 10 feet and I want to drop it down or at an access, I just double tap and drop it or lift it up. iPilot, uh, Minn Kota remote always stays right there. Let's look at this little drawer quick. Junk drawer number two. This is... Uh, all like fishing tools. I keep six, eight, 10 pound line at the ready, the stuff that I constantly use, good to go. But things like super glue, pliers, jab stick, screen cleaner, uh, scale, split ring pliers, line conditioner, all the stuff that I'm constantly using nonstop every day on the water <laughs> is right there. Now let's turn this way and I'll show you a couple of really cool little things on the impact. So one, a ruler. A designated spot for the ruler. A little slot where it slides in and out. You got a 33 inch ruler. I don't know why they make them that long for walleyes, but maybe one day we'll get up there. See, I always know where that's at. And that is right next to these drawers. This is one of my favorite things about these lawns. On the right side, I keep most of my walleye like jigs, plastics, stuff like that it kind of depends what i'm doing but i usually keep bass baits on the left side like my go-to's and my go-to all this stuff on the right side if i'm doing a walleye tournament or going on a walleye trip or something i'll swap them around but how about what do i have in here three six nine thirty seven hundred size boxes get yourself a label maker boom hair jigs what do you want you want bucktail jigs you want Moontail jigs, <laughs> so it's super quick to just slide the drawer out, grab what you want. Let's see, paddle tails, swim baits, boom, all my swim baits, storm largo shads, hybrid swim bait jig heads. Just at the ready, the label maker is, every boat should come with one. Right now I've got all crank baits and hard baits on the left side because I just came from a walleye trip and all my bass stuff is kind of piled in the garage right now. I'll get more into that in a little bit. There's another hidden cubby here I kind of want to show you. It's underneath the steering wheel. I'll either put a tackle box in there with like stuff I'm using that day, or I keep my jigs, stuff that I'm constantly retying, like terminal tackle. So I keep all my jigs there, and then like the terminal tackle box. The main stuff where when you're retying, if you need split rings, hooks, weights. I mean, this box weighs like 27 pounds. I keep that stuff right there for like, just the constant retying of leaders. Great spot to shove gloves, a sweatshirt, if it wasn't 7,000 degrees. Oh my gosh. Carry on. <laughs> Let's go to the glove box. This is just a disaster. This is what this turns into if you fish a lot. If you're cutting and retying baits, it always ends up for me just turning into 
a random hodgepodge of baits going in there. And about once a month, I'll pull them all out. I mean, I think you'd put tools in there or whatever, ideally, but the glove box is massive. And it is also a massive mess. I've got freaking everything you could think of in here. GoPro kits for filming. Each one's got a clamp rig, which also, when I film, these small rigs clamp right on there. One GoPro front, one GoPro back. Each of these little kits has got a external battery, memory card. So because of my job, I have to just keep those in there and ready. And every boat should have one of these in the glove box. This is your, if you open this up, something bad happened box, but it saves the day. Extra bolts, extra screws, you know, the freaking, if somebody gets a hook in their hand and you need to snip it. Tools, licenses, lighters, hand warmers, electrical tape, connections, zip ties. This is your day saver box. So I never not have that in the glove box. But it is insane how huge this thing is and I can't justify or I can't show you, I mean, on a camera how big it is. But I've got a fire extinguisher and it takes up about a twelfth of this whole thing in there. All right, let's get on to some more fun stuff. Wait. We cannot go to the front yet because I skipped over like the most obvious thing when you're looking back here. This is my ice fishing live scope setup. So you can take it around ice fishing or get yourself this fin gear pole on a Cisco base and then you don't have to like rewire anything. It's all ready to go. I love, I should probably just talk about this because I get about seven emails a day asking what pole this is. This is made by a company called Fin Gear. They're live scan live sonar pole it works with mega live active target live scope what i like about it super beefy i broke probably four or five other brands of poles over the last five years trying to save money buying cheap ones hundred dollar poles whatever they're all expensive but cheap poles i should have just bought one of these from day one you pull this pin to adjust up and down and when you lift that adjust left and right. So you can literally do it in one motion. Swing it out and lock it in. Boom, you're fishing. You wanna point it that way, lock it in. Lock it in and it just twists up like that. It is so slick and I can go with my trolling motor on 10 and I don't have to be like, oh crap, I just broke another pole because it flexed. I mean, it's beefy, absolutely love it. This uh, live scope I actually have on one of Fingear's ice mounts for their shuttles. I just put it in this bag. Pull it out of there, but... So yeah, same unit I use for ice fishing and then it can go in the boat or you can pull it in another buddy's boat. If you want it up at the front, you plug that sport track in on the front. If it's windy and you're spot locked, wanting to cast out the back, boom, it's in the back. But I guess I could not talk about that because it's probably half the reason I ever catch a walleye. Now let's go to the front. As we move towards the front, take a little look-see down that vinyl mat, that floor. It's a snap-in deal. 10 out of 10 recommend. It does not get hot. It's 96 today. There's planes trying to get out of here and fly to Antarctica to avoid it. The floor is not scorching hot. It dries super fast. They snap right in, you pull them out and you pressure wash them when you're washing your boat off and they look like brand new. If I didn't have that, I would probably hire those crazy aqua traction guys to do my whole boat because I think it's so cool. But for the meantime, this little floor mat, it's the deal. Now my favorite upgrade of the boat, I just did this spring and it has blown my mind, is hidden down underneath here. This is the rod locker. Now first, as you can see, you can hold two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 rods in there, stacked up all of their own slot. What I actually normally do is pull these six screws out, take these rod sleeves off, and if you put rod sleeves on individual rods, you could put 30 rods in there, 40 rods in there. All the rods you could ever think of in there. If you didn't want the individual slots, that's a personal preference depending on how many rods you have, but now, my favorite upgrade so far. You can't see it, I'm gonna have to throw a picture over the top. 
down underneath here, I have two amped lithium trolling motor batteries. They're 250 amp hour, 36 volt batteries. So combined 100 amp hours. Oh my gosh. I can run this thing. Well, I just did it this last week. I fished for two or three days straight, then went up north for two or three days and I never charged my boat. Got home, plugged it in after like four days of fishing, whatever it was. By the time I tidied up a couple things, 10, 15 minutes later, I looked down, I got a green light. They're fully charged. It doesn't even make sense. It shaved 70 pounds off from having to run my normal three lead or AGM batteries to just the two lithiums. I got to get rid of one. So I have an extra slot, shaved 70 pounds off, and I was able to then put in a 100 amp hour 12 volt battery to run all of my electronics. It weighs like 21 pounds. It'll run all of my screens, gadgets, live well pumps, everything forever. I mean, I never have to worry about power again. Never have to worry about killing your, your big motor battery, your cranking battery, proficient a tournament, running a live well for eight hours, all the gadgets. I feel silly that I didn't do it earlier. They're stupid money, they're expensive, but it's actually an investment. It makes your stuff work so much better, so much longer. And the thing is, I was replacing trolling motor batteries almost every year. I could get about a year and a half out of lead and AGM batteries, and I don't understand why. I wasn't buying cheap ones. I'd keep them on a battery maintainer, a tender in the winter, heated garage, insulated, warm. I tried the next year, I tried bringing them in the house, once a month, putting them on a charge. It doesn't matter what I do, I get a year or one season out of them. I don't know why. And so I'm spending five, $600 on just cheap, cheaper lead group 31 trolling motor batteries and buying a new cranking battery and whatever every year. And it's like, I can't remember what these two amped trolling motor batteries were. I think it was like $1,500 and it comes with the new onboard charger. If it lasts me two or three seasons, I'm literally coming out ahead and having a much better experience and way more time on the water in between. So the crazy thing is a few years ago, that would have been $10,000 worth of batteries. The cost has come down drastically, just like buying a lithium auger or whatever, like the technology for an electric battery didn't used to be that great. When the first electric ice augers came out, you could drill seven holes and they weighed 100 pounds, right? Now, it's weird when you hear a gas motor <laughs> drilling a hole out on the lake. And it's kind of the same thing with lithium batteries for boats and stuff now too, where that cost is, cost is coming down, technology is getting better, and we're finally at the point where I feel like it makes sense to invest in them. And I've just been blown away. I've been using them all summer. I, can't, I could talk for an hour about this right now because I'm so jacked, but I am just blown away. If you have any questions, drop them down below. I'll put links to the batteries that I have, but treat yourself, man. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh yeah, I wanted to show you one thing quick because this is a question that I couldn't really find online myself um, and wasn't sure how to ask or whatever. Something that everybody asks all the time is like, if your normal onboard charger is gonna work with lithium batteries, the, the first thing you have to figure out is if your onboard charger, okay, so whether or not it can work with lithium is one thing, but it depends what kind of lithium. So like, this onboard charger works with lithium, but only 12 volt. They're not gonna charge 36 volt or 24 volt lithium batteries. But like the trolling motor batteries that I bought from Amped, they're 250 amp hour, 36 volt. They come with their own separate charger. A 36 volt charger, you can see it down here. It's about this big. You can see it's probably about the size of my hand. That charges the trolling motor batteries and it's small enough that you can put another little onboard charger there. That's a three bank, you could do a two bank or a one bank or whatever to charge your cranking and your other stuff. So you do need a separate battery if it's a 36 volt or 24. But the fact that that freed up a battery slot and I was able to put in that 100 amp hour lithium to run all of my electronics, that one can run off of a traditional Minn Kota Precision charger. So 
I don't know, it's kind of confusing. If you have questions, drop them below. I'll do my best to answer. But that's kind of the short Cliff's Notes version. Oh, by the way, when I opened that rod locker, you might have been like, there's hardly any rods in there. Well, that's another thing that I like about this boat is you can have him, them strategically draped and placed all over the place without them being in your way. If you take a peek up front, I'll angle a half dozen rods out the side. So when I'm standing there on the trolling motor, I've got like the three or four go-tos right next to me can grab and go. You see on the back here, I got two on each side of the rod or each side of the boat here packed away on the side, but they're not in the way. You're not stepping on them. You're not tripping on them. And I never go anywhere without a jigging wrap, riding shotgun right underneath the throttle so that I can put the boat in neutral, grab this bad boy and sling it out the side, which by the way, I finally got to play with the new Elliot Identity series the other day, and I've played with them before, but when I say play, I mean I got to go out and whack like 12 or 15 walleyes, including fish up to probably 27, 28 inches on these new technique specific rods. If you haven't seen that content, you're gonna wanna take a look at it because they were snapping and we got some grown ones, but first impressions, these blew me out of the water and if I could summarize them in one word, they feel like butter man. But anyway, where were we? What I'm standing on right now, some folks call a live well. I call it a garbage. I'd never ever use the front live well because the back one is like 24 gallons. It's big, it's awesome. I'm always netting fish and processing them back there. So this one has turned into a handy dandy garbage. I know it looks disgusting in there, but when I wash my boat, you pressure wash it and it cleans right up. Some people will get like the bait deal in here where you can get a little minnow bucket and stuff. What I do is I always have an angle up here. So this is uh, what, like the middle size? I'm not using minnows today, but so I took the mesh out. I just got leeches where I always use this Strike Master deal and crawlers. And I don't want to have to clean out dead minnows and dead bait in there. And this I can bring into the bait shop with me, bring it into my garage, plug it into the wall at night. Or if I'm not using bait, it's not in here. And that's a perfect garbage. Let's keep going to the front. Should we talk about the fun stuff? Come on up here. Let me wipe some sweat out of my face first. So I've got an Ultrex on the front. One thing that I did with it, this isn't an option from the factory but I installed a recessed foot pedal. I, like I mentioned earlier, I used to have a bass boat. I'm used to fishing up front, standing flat. These things are super tall. So like you're doing the, the Captain Morgan all day, standing on one foot. Oh, I'm so sweaty. <laughs> standing on one foot. And if you got three foot white caps, you're switching feet because your legs are sore. So I actually took a jigsaw and cut the template out and then uh, you got to cut a couple of the rod tubes because this is the deep like four and a half inch tray. It's by Comfort Troll, made for all Trexes. But uh, it was so worth it and now it's like basically flush and it just takes so much stress off of your knees. It's just, I recommend it. It's super sketchy cutting a hole this big in the floor of your boat, but it, uh, it worked out pretty slick. So. I've got a couple of things going on here. Hummingbird up front, because Minn Kota, Hummingbird, you can link it all together. So getting that link option to be able to choose a contour, like say, I'm trolling walleyes at night and I want to troll 10 feet of water. Slide the cursor over to 10 foot, follow. Set the cruise control at 1.7. You just fish, you don't touch anything. Minn Kota and Hummingbird speaking together is a dream come true. But also, I'm a big live scope snob, so I put a separate live scope unit up here. I've got 360 on here, I'll just pull this up. And I now have a live scope transducer on my trolling motor there too, so that way when it's calmer or I'm in search mode looking for fish, I don't think there's a better way to search for fish, like when you've already found the spot, than staying on that trolling motor casting moving casting moving there's no good right or wrong answer for what's better mounting the live scope on your trolling motor or the pole it's 50 50. so i finally after four years was like you know what i'm doing both so i have both options 
Um, but as far as searching fish, finding fish, you kind of screw over your fishing partner who's in the back because you're constantly pointing the boat towards where you want to cast. Um, but then on those windy days when you want to spot lock and actually just fish and not worry about boat control, that would be useless. So having that pole system in the back is pretty clutch. And I mean, for a long time, I just ran the ice bundle right here and fished with the pole mounted right here on the sport track. And that worked good too. So you kind of got to do whatever, whatever works best for you. But uh, down in this little cubby here is about 7,000 feet of wires. <laughs> I can't open it up because this mount locks the door. But maybe you can take a little peek. You can see that black ethernet box with all the connections. So that's where I mounted my, the switch, the ethernet box for all my Humminbird link stuff on that door. So it's, you open it up and it's all easily reachable. And that's where everything in the boat links together. It all talks to each other. That's how my trolling motor can speak to the Minn Kota, how it can work with my graph in the back. How if I mark a waypoint up front, it marks in the back. It's just a perfect little waterproof spot to, to mount all that stuff and hide about a million feet of wires. <laughs> um, I love the butt seat. Like I said, I'm a bass guy originally. Grew up with bass boats. I love having that bump seat here. A Rapala tool holder should be on everyone in the front. You always know where a pliers and a scissors is anytime because you never when you need one you only have one free hand because you have a fish in a hand or something so it's always there i mean i barely sit on this thing but just leaning against it takes so much stress off of uh your knees and legs and if it's windy to be stable i mean there's days i do pull it out and you have a lot more room but i'll never not have a butt seat up in the front of my boat now where should we go to next let's go here this is a disaster right now, but this is a bunch of extra tackle basically right now. Oh, and rain gear. Just a giant storage compartment with tackle. I've got extra trolling motor props, jumper cables, things like that. But then mostly it's like overflow tackle. I've started using these bags, which I really like since, like I said before, I do a lot of uh, fishing for everything. Fishing for walleyes, fishing for bass. So I have bags with different stuff. This is all panfish stuff. I don't know why this bass bag is still in here, but uh, then if I know I'm going fishing for largemouth, I'll grab my bag with like punch and stuff or whatever, but just something I started to do that I really like. All right, now let's just hop over to this other side. This is like the biggest, most ball and storage compartment up here. I feel a little silly that I'm only using it for life jacket type storage right now. I think what I might do is switch this to be a tackle accessory side. Consolidate the life jackets, the other one, but I've got a million life jackets in here. The throwable, I've got bumpers, which these are the only bumpers I would ever actually use and do use. They've got the little sport track deal. So you just hang them over the edge and they clip right into the sport track like that. Like, my goodness, remember when bumpers, you had to learn how to be a little boy scout and do overhand knots and stuff, and then the bumper would still not be lined up to protect the boat? <laughs> so that's super slick. But just tons of room over here. The mesh on the side actually normally has about 7 million bags of plastics if I'm fishing and things I'm using. I always keep those little handy ropes in the side, extra tools and pliers but it's just a nice little accessory where you'll start shoving stuff, sweatshirts, whatever. Everything gets put in there, but there's one more deal here I should probably show, though I don't want to, because it's a mess. This is the ultimate junk drawer for me right now. It's not organized. It's got like snap weights, covers for all my graphs, GoPro clamps and mounts. Um, I keep a little portable John thing in there for people who don't want to try to pee over the side of the boat. I mean, that's the junk drawer for me. <laughs> I am literally melting. There are so many things I could talk about. This could be a six hour video. It's already way too long. And every time I look around, I'm seeing things I didn't talk about. Like the jump seats that flip up in the back, you flip those open, there's storage underneath. I mean, just, 
everywhere I look, I see other things. If you have specific questions, drop a comment. I'll do my best to answer. But I've just been loving this boat. I've used it for three years exactly now this week. It's been three years on the dot. And I just, it's a perfect fishing boat. It can do everything. It can be a family rig. You can bass fish. You can musky fish. You can walleye fish. You can do it all. It's fishy. What else do you need to say? I don't know. Maybe we should go catch a fish now. It's a lot easier to sweat your butt off when you're reeling in a 24 inch walleye. Let's do it. Shut that thing off. <laughs> let's roll. Let's go. Let's fire this up. Should we? Should we let them hear what it sounds like? <laughs> What's that like Tim Allen? <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> Let's roll, man. Oh, trolling motor. Yeah, we got so many things to put away and do. Let's go fish. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have specific questions. And uh, yeah, next time you see me, I'll be catching them.